Hi everyone, welcome back to my new Model Barney channel. Um, I just thought this might be of interest to uh, some of you. I've got a forthcoming exhibition booked uh, at my local club's show uh, in Bognor Regis, uh, and that's in January, so we're now uh, beginning of December. And given that I built this layout, uh, Lyocum Key, um, during the pandemic, uh, it hasn't been out for a while, so I thought I'd better get it ready for the uh, this forthcoming exhibition. So I really needed to address a few issues on the, on the fiddle yard, um, and uh, I might add a little bit more detail to the actual layout itself, and I've got to populate the road with a few more vehicles. Um, but I thought it might be uh, interesting just to show how uh, this fiddle yard is going to uh, attach to this particular layout to make it uh, ready for its uh, first uh, for its debut on the exhibition rounds. So uh, let's have a look at uh, what we're doing. Right, so as you can see, I've created a fiddle yard. This is controlled by a Kato controller and the Kato point switches. Um, obviously the, the build video for the actual layout itself I've already posted um, but I didn't really cover much of the of the fiddle yard on that so the first thing uh, we need to do let's just take that off because I can then show you how I've built up all the um, all the sort of covers for the fiddle yard so it's not all visible um, at the exhibition so the first thing um, I've done is to create some little catches here so I can actually attach the fiddle yard specifically to the uh, to the layout itself so it's not going to sort of come adrift so let's just screw that in okay so that's now nice and secure and attached to the layout itself so the track I've used for the fiddle yard once again is the Kato so and that just clips onto the actual layout using the standard joiners uh, for the Kato track so that clicks in place there and then I can go ahead and connect all these wires up to the various uh, point switches and the controller to power those up as well. I'm not going to show you that because that's quite straightforward. So what I created was um, some uh, covers, if you like, for the, this fiddle yard. This doesn't look particularly attractive from an exhibition point of view. So I wanted it all to be collapsible um, because as you might know from my previous um, videos, everything has to go in my Mini Cooper to exhibitions so I haven't got a lot of room so the first bit that goes in I've put made these pegs they locate in the holes in the base of the fiddle yard so you push down like that and then this one goes in this side that way around like that and the front, which I've <clears throat> put the name of the layout on, I hope you can see that, because on the other side of the table, um, that literally goes on, on little magnets. So that's held in place by magnets. And then this bit goes on the top like so, which is on little pegs. And that just literally masks off the view from the top. So there we go, that's the fiddle yard set up. So one bit on this layout that I really never was, was particularly happy about, even after I thought it was finished, was the way that the fiddle yard here uh, butts up to the layout. So this road goes off nowhere and it's all a bit abrupt. And looking at it again now, um, I'm thinking I'd, I need to do something with it really. So my thought was that I might do um, the, the side of a station building um, in ultra low relief, so it'll be sort of one dimensional um, on here, so that we've got a pavement in front of that, so that would look okay. 
and I think here I might make the impression of perhaps the start of a station canopy something like that I just feel that it needs something here I don't really want to do uh, like sky or any sort of scenics like that because it doesn't really lend itself to that it's more of a um, this is more of a, a, a sort of industrial kind of um, layout so it needs to be a building of some kind uh, but it also kind of needs to make sense so I thought well maybe that's the station entrance for, for traffic and the lines going into the station maybe from there um, so I may well address this bit next uh, the other thing I need to do as I say is probably get some more cars on here it looks a bit sparse at the moment uh, and I'll add a, a little bit more detail right so you're joining me a bit later um, and as you can see I've been busy with the scraps of Plasticard and I've made this uh, ultra low relief uh, building front uh, which uh, like its creator is uh, is fairly one-dimensional um, so basically literally Plasticard uh, is, is all Plasticard construction um, the because it is so uh, one-dimensional I've had to cut the surrounds out of the Kestrel windows and actually insert those in so they've got no sort of backing piece um, the building on the right hand side here um, I've actually made double thickness because I wanted a slight step in the projection on these to give the impression that it is a different building uh, and once again with the um, canopy because of the fact that it's hard up against that dark um, bit of fiddle yard um, housing I needed to bring the canopy forward a bit to at least give the impression that the road and tracks may be going somewhere so I didn't want those to be completely um, one-dimensional so they they stand off the um, the front of that um, fiddle yard partition by I would think probably about eight mil something like that so I think the next step uh, will be to uh, get a coat of primer on this uh, just to unify it a bit uh, and then we can look at um, maybe applying some paint well I've now put some paint on uh, and uh, weathered it as well so this is just uh, using uh, acrylic paints uh, for the base coat and I've just done oil washes and dry brushing with oils to give the impression of dirt and grime and a bit of rust as well on the canopy um, so this is done uh, the other thing I've done is this back piece here hopefully you can see there that I've um, I've just given that a coat of um, Johnson clear which is um, it's actually a floor polish which um, us scale model modelers particularly aeroplane modelers um, we tend to coat the, the uh, model with that before we put decals on but it does give it quite a nice glossy coat uh, the idea of that is that when when I put this on the top so let's just rest that on there and hopefully you'll pick up the the reflection uh, it looks like glass because this has got to be so close to the um, this back piece here I can't afford any depth so I didn't want to use a, sh a sheet of uh, acetate or anything like that so therefore um, I've, I've just done it with paint I think contrary to what I said earlier on at the start of this video I will actually paint a skyline in here to give the impression of um, a sort of city um, in you know clouded in maybe a bit of fog uh, just to give the impression of depth so I think I'll probably tackle that next right here we go then so I've painted my uh, cityscape um, basically just um, freehand painted uh, some sort of buildings and shapes in the background uh, to give the impression of depth used graduated different greys um, I use my hair as a colour template sad isn't it which is why there's so much white in it as well um, so once I'd um, established a bit of depth by painting the shapes in uh, different depths and, and, uh, and colours of grey so the uh, obviously the foreground is is a deeper gray color or darker gray and then I just misted the whole over with the airbrush so that is just one advantage of, uh, of having an airbrush that you can actually uh, 
do stuff like that to make it look like uh, mist, I guess. So let me just, let's just put that over the top like so. And that's kind of how it will look. So I'm quite happy how that's turned out. It was just to give the impression that something's going on behind it and it's not just black or sky. Um, so I think what I need to do uh, now is actually attach it to the to the layout um, by setting the fiddle yard up and then gluing these bits together so that uh, this will remain as part of this and part of the flat pack um, fiddle yard cover. Uh, and then we'll see how that looks on the layout. Okay, so this is where we're at now. Um, excuse the sort of noise in the background, it's just started to snow on the conservatory roof. Uh, but as you can see, um, I've now put the scenic part onto the layout. Uh, I'm quite happy with the look of that. Uh, I think that looks much better than just that plain front that was there before. So I've ordered some more vehicles um, online. So once they're here, I'll. Uh, I'm going to put something just uh, alongside the side of this building. Um, I've also added some gates there because I think that looks better now than just that open space that was there before. Um, and I've got some more figures to paint up so I'll do that and then uh, populate those. The other thing I realised I hadn't done, I hadn't given this uh, little coal ship um, a name. So uh, in yet another shameless nod to my beloved West Ham United, I've decided to uh, name it the Bowling Castle after our old, uh, our old ground, the Bowling Ground. Um, so yeah, happy with that. that uh, I just made the decals up um, on some decal sheet, just printed them off on the computer. Just one other thing that was a bit strange. Um, in the process of uh, putting this layout away, it lives in one of these sort of... Um, polythene nylon boxes that you store under a bed um, as I was tipping it into the into the um, box the top of the crane came off and shot down this end of the layout and knocked off a little figure that was standing right there and can I find it can I buggery he has gone somewhere I'm thinking of posting a missing person but isn't it weird how something just disappears into thin air. I've had everything apart on the floor, can't find him anywhere. So uh, yeah, that was a bit of a weird one. Right, well I've painted my figures up. Um, hopefully that's uh, in focus and you can see them. Uh, these are Pricer uh, figures. They're actually um, European Engage, so it's one to 160, I think. So slightly small, uh, but they'd, they'd be fine nevertheless. Uh, so just been given a coat of uh, acrylic paints, uh, Vallejo acrylics, then an oil wash to uh, bring out some detail, a bit like a panel wash, and then a dry brush. Let's move that out of the way. That might be better actually. Um, and then just a, a dry brush with some uh, white oil paint uh, and a coat of uh, matte varnish. So I normally glue my figures onto an old bit of sprue like this and I just find it easier to, to paint them in a sort of batch like that. So they're now ready to uh, get off the sprue and, uh, and get onto the layout. So here we go then. As you can see, the figures are now uh, glued on with some vehicles. Uh, I think it's turned out all right, actually. I've stuck a DMU on the track in the background there. I just thought that would look interesting coming out the throat of the station. This little fella's mopping the uh, deck of the bowling castle. And just a few more shots of the layout as it looks now. Um, so I think we're pretty much ready to roll on this now. Um, so it'd be interesting to give it its first exhibition outing uh, in January. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I'll catch you for the next one. Cheers.